Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's your friend Miriam, aka Lucky Number Seventy Eight, and uh, I'm here to recap uh, a lot of y'all's favorite day of the year, Black Friday. Now, um, I don't want to mislead you guys or disappoint anybody. I only went to three stores for Black Friday, so you know if you're expecting the big hauls that you've seen from some of the big toy unboxers and reviewers on YouTube, you're going to be a little disappointed. But I got quality stuff. So the first place I went to was Game Over Video Games. And we got this stylish tote from them, probably for spending over a certain amount of money. And um, from but o'clock to another time that was also but o'clock, but a little later but o'clock, they were having 50% off um, their entire inventory of used games. And since they are a retro game, company, um, that was most of what I was looking at anyway. Um, so I got Super Star Wars, which is absent from this video because um, my brother has the Super Nintendo, but um, I also got two games for Game Boy Color, the first being Tarzan, here in the box. Well, not, not new in the box, but in the box. And not complete either, there's no manual or anything. Go ape on Game Boy! It's tough being an orphan raised by apes, but when humans arrive and try to change your world, you'll be forced to show them that you're not just monkeying around. Good luck, it's a jungle out there. Thrilling Tarzan action! Four playable characters, wild jungle adventures, and there's some pretty cool shots of what looked like pretty fun platforming gameplay on the back, only for Game Boy Color. Not compatible with other Game Boy systems. Well, they couldn't have foretold the uh, Game Boy Advance. Or probably they could have because it was being built, but official Nintendo seal of quality. And here's the cartridge. And no manual, nothing like that. No inserts. Still really cool. I can't wait to start playing this. Gotta love these retro boxes. The next was one of my all-time favorite um, comic series from Mad Magazine, Spy vs. Spy, adapted into the Game Boy Color game, because why not? Because of course, take a black and white uh, comic series and turn it into a fantastic Full color Game Boy game. Sure. The Cold War is over, but the lukewarm war rages on, says the box. Um, only for Game Boy Color, not compatible with other Game Boy systems. Let's open this up. We do have the manual and also came with a really cool mini poster of Spy vs. Spy. And here is the cartridge. Looking forward to playing that too. And looking at the booklet, seeing if there's anything good. Here you can at least see the, uh, the screen cap they selected, probably the start menu. And looks like the rest of this is just specifics about how to play. Um, it's either to be a two-player game with two different Game Boys uh, and a game uh, link cable, or you can play versus the computer. And on the back, it says to subscribe to Mad Magazine, which wouldn't be such a bad thing to do, honestly. I love me some Mad Magazine. So, that was my haul from the game store. And um, then I went to uh, Pop Culture Company, which is a fantastic independent comic shop. And uh, 
I had been there a couple weeks prior, and uh, the owner of the company told me he was going to go into his storage units and get Power Rangers toys out, because I'm primarily a Power Rangers and Oz collector. I didn't tell him about the Oz, because I collect Oz books more than Oz merchandise. But, um, yeah, so he did, and so I have some cool things, both vintage and new, to show y'all. Um, first thing, out in the half-price bin, he had a, he had a one-hour sale where everything was 40% off, but he had a half-price bin outside. He had the Series 2 collectible figures, uh, from Mighty Morphin. So... Trini. Let's see. They have the whole gang out of costume and the White Ranger in costume. They have um, three, two monsters of the week, Lord Zed and Bulk and Skull. That was series two. So I got Yellow Ranger. Pink Ranger, Kimberly. bulk, and then a little cheapy um, from back in the day, probably, I'm guessing, from Walmart or a party shop, but I would guess Walmart, these little teeny party favor Power Rangers from 1993. Welcome to the Power Party. And, uh... I'm probably going to open these up eventually, but I don't see the need right at this moment. There isn't any articulation. The plastic looks relatively high quality as these things were. Um, uh, the sculpts and paint are a little uh, higher quality than what you might expect from this era. Um, well, I say that and then I saw Bulk's face. So, maybe not so high quality on the paint. But, uh, still pretty high quality. And they have a really cool foil label on them that says they're genuine Power Rangers merchandise. It's pretty cool. And these four items were two fifty a piece. So it's a real bargain given that the uh, the cheapest of that bulk that I found on eBay um, was six dollars. So it's a pretty good deal. And then the big item of the day well well then, this is not the big item of the day. We got three free comic books from them. These are meant to be free comic books. It's not like he just gave me free comic books, but it's still fun. And uh, we read them cover to cover and enjoyed them thoroughly. But the big item of the day was the Legacy Power Morpher from Toys R Us. Um, got this for $24, which is a huge discount over the 60 that we've been seeing. And, um, this is the big, cool toy line that Toys R Us has been spearheading. They've been Toys R Us exclusives. They're really awesome. I'm gonna open this, open this up. Heavy, heavy metal. A nice die cast on the front. Oh, and 
the electronics work really well. Um, and then there's a nice belt buckle attachment that fits on pretty easily. You just put it on like that. These are just clips. And uh, you put the, the morpher in the belt buckle. And there's a coin for each form. Now I'm going to start with Mammoth because Zack is my favorite ranger. And the coins are really high quality. They're, they're cast metal. They say Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the back. So let's see, how do I do this? Uh, one button, there's a button here that's just a decoy and a button here that opens up the morpher. There's a lot of detail on the back. And then this moves. You know, you can put it down for your morphin sequence or up for your belt buckle. Let's see. How do I get it out? That's the real question. There we go. Just seems to twist out. Alright. Now I don't think these do anything different. But it's Morphin time. Mastodon Ranger. Yeah. Does it do anything else? I feel like it should. But um There's a button on the back, ooh, and it sings the jingle when you turn it on. What does the button on the back do? Does it eject the... Let's see. Let it out. Come on. That is exactly what it does. So now we know. Alright. Now we know what happens when you hold the button, so let's do that again. I'm sure there's a more elaborate way to use this toy, um, but here, let's eject this one, so I'll show you what all of them look like. First of all, T-Rex Zord, not Zord, but Power. I don't think I clipped him in well enough. Then there's the Smilodon, the saber tooth cat, saber tooth tiger. Pretty cool. Ceratops. Pretty cool. And last, but certainly, certainly not least, the Pteranodon. wasn't so cost prohibitively, you know, expensive, it would be um, really cool to have like five of these and then a sixth white tiger uh, morpher just like 
set up on a shelf or something, you know, so you had the whole set. But this is cool. So. default Tyrannosaurus Rex. Pretty cool. Need to stop doing that to that poor T-Rex coin. And then, I'll fold the back part in it in the belt buckle. How does that go? Let's find out. Okay. So now it's officially in belt buckle. So there's no real morphin you can do when it's in. Presumably, when it's already in your belt buckle, you're already transformed. So that's cool. How do you get it out? I think you just pull, pull it out. That works. I don't know if the belt buckle thing works, but it's better than having to buy your own adapter. Um, it's not super great quality, but this is super great quality and the coins are super great quality. So, is it worth the $60 that they're charging for it? Actually, probably, if you have it, like, and you're planning to use it on a Power Rangers toy, then absolutely. Um, but, it's a much, much safer bet for the 24 I paid for it, in my opinion. Um, how do you... S Trying to figure out exactly how this goes on. Open this. Alright. Now it all goes back together, and I put it back in the box. For now. I'm sure I'll play with it in the future. But it will also make a great display item. So, as you can see, it goes back into the box really well. It basically looks new. If you know, if you know what you're looking for, it doesn't. But that's okay. It's the Legacy Power Morpher. And I'm really happy. It's my first Legacy item. Uh, I've never considered the Legacy collection to be something I could uh, justify putting my money into, but, uh, you know, I'm happy to have a piece. It's a really cool investment. And the last thing I got on uh, Black Friday that wasn't a holiday gift that I can't really show you uh, without ruining surprises for some people was, um, Bed uh, was at Bedrock City Comics. Um, they had a fantastic deal of 25% off uh, action figures um, in the afternoon of Black Friday. And I got my all-time favorite Power Ranger, Loose. You know, it's a loose uh, figure. But with her sword, I have another from this set that doesn't have a sword. Um, but here is Taylor, the greatest Power Ranger who ever lived, and uh, she comes with her cool sword, Ooh. and I'm not sure if she'll hold it, but she should, because she has a cool punching and slashing motion, 
but uh, one thing I probably can't show you is that the paint has, has almost entirely come off of her hand because of how often, presumably, her previous owner tried to get the sword in there. But there we go. The sword went in with only a minimum of white paint on it, and I'll show you her slashing motion. One arm goes up, the other goes down. Up, down. So this can also be a running motion, or a punch, or a stab. So, that's pretty cool. Um, she has articulation at the shoulder and the elbow, no articulation in the leg, not anywhere, just at the hip. And then articulation at the neck, no wrist articulation, um, yeah, no waist articulation. And then, and that's all I got on Black Friday. Additionally, I got a couple items from eBay on Black Friday that I thought were worthy of showing. Um, one is probably uniform with the figure I just showed you, is the Lunar Wolf um, from Wild Force. And uh, I don't have this form, I have the regular one, not the powered up one. Um, he, do, he should, he seems like he should have articulated elbows because he has this detail at the elbows, but he does not. Instead, he articulates at this strange spot, like, here, like, just under the shoulder, where it would be very strange for a human being to be able to move. But there you have it, over his preposterously large biceps. His neck rotates, no waist rotation, hip rotation, uh, knee bend, but no rotation, and then nothing else to rotate or move. So that's cool. And then, the other thing I got from eBay, just happened to come in on Black Friday, were um, the McDonald's toys from Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue. Now, it's not the whole set, it's one, five, and seven. So, red, blue, and yellow. Um, that's fine, yellow's my favorite. Uh, Lightspeed Rescue Ranger. Um, I had one of these as a kid. I had the Titanium Ranger, and there's a cool reason for that. Um, this was the show from 2000 to 2001. Um, my family kept kosher, keeps kosher, and kept kosher at that time, and so did I at that time. I don't anymore, but my family still does. Um, so I couldn't go to McDonald's. You know, there, there was no good way I could ask, can I go to McDonald's? Um, and immediately in the wake of September 11th, now, this is how I remember it, it could be a little different because I don't remember exactly when the toys were released, so it could have been before September 11th, but I, I believe it was after September 11th, um, there was this little boy who, uh, who was Muslim, and no one would hang out with him because he was Muslim, and it was just after September 11th, and no one would hang out with me because I was Jewish, and um, this was um, fourth grade. It was the four weeks of my life I've ever spent at a non-Jewish school a as a student, and um, I didn't even ask him. One day, you know, I was just complaining to him, and the next day, he came to me with a Titanium Ranger from this series, which is amazing. So for years, it was the only McDonald's figure I owned that wasn't from my early childhood before we kept kosher. And um, I've always wanted more of the set, but like, it's always been very special to me. Um, and it's one of the few reasons why, as a Super Sentai fan, I should hate Titanium Ranger. But because of this thing that happened to me, um, I have a special place in my heart for him. And right now, I'm watching Lightspeed Rescue for the first time since I was a kid. Um, so, this is special. Um, and I got him for a bargain basement price. I think it was three, three dollars, three fifty for the, all three of them, so, uh, counting shipping. So, these are all figurine with bursting action case. They all have this, this case that eventually, if you have the whole set, comes together to make a uh, Megazord. So I'm going to actually open this up. 
Um, I know that's blasphemy, but YouTube, it's worth it. So, uh, here we go. Power Rangers, Lightspeed, Rescue. Let's start with number one. And number one, Red Power Ranger, figurine with bursting action case. The only insert is this uh, guide to using it and to connecting it to the other rangers. So here's the bursting action case. This will form the body of your of your Megazord. And they actually detailed on the back the actual the actual details of the Megazord. So if you have a Gundam marker or something, you can just go over this in black and details will pop out. They have the, the face mask correct of the Lightspeed Red Zord. And yeah, there's tons of detail on these, so it would be great to get a black Gundam marker and just go over everything. But, um open it, and out bursts the Red Ranger. And there's some sort of a peg in here, so I think, let's see, I bet you can peg him in there. All of them seem to be molded the same. This looks identical to the pose of the Titanium Ranger. I have to open the inner bag to find out. This is great. I love this. They actually did the detail on the back, which they could have just left red. Um, but they actually painted, they painted the arms, they painted the boots. Um, and I know it looks like they just didn't paint back detail, but no, these white stripes do not converge on the back of the uniform. But they didn't paint the belt, which they could have. And they didn't paint the belt buckle blue either, but that it would have been asking a lot to ask them to put paint that wasn't anywhere else. But they did paint the black face mask. So let's see. Um, oh, let's see. So you can stick him on here. So he looks like he's jumping out of the Megazord fighting. Then, you squeeze the sides, and he bursts out fighting. That's pretty cool. So I'm actually really pleased with that figure. Everything about it is great. Yeah, and that's the Red Ranger. Uh, now let's look at number five, the Blue Power Ranger. I won't talk so much about him. Basically because Chad, I like Chad, but Chad isn't super interesting. If you've watched the show, you'll probably agree with me. He doesn't do a lot. He doesn't say a lot, he doesn't have a lot of scenes, and yeah. This is the left arm, so this has some detail, you know, fists, you know, fingers balled up. Um, this one is also meant to look like a, like a guy all itself, so it has hands, feet, and a little light speed rescue helmet. And... Also, it's worth noting that um, I have not seen GoGo5 on which Lightspeed Rescue is based, but um, GoKaiger is my favorite Sentai, and the GoGo5 tribute episode, which I believe is number 25, was my favorite episode of GoKaiger, mainly because there was a lot of Yuri shipping potential with Luka and Ahim. Um, 
as you can see, it's a very similar mold, um, not exactly the same. The head swivels, the arms swivel, the waist swivels, nothing in the lower extremities. Um, so this one also pegs in to this peg, which is spring-loaded, and like the other one, you can lock the case and then squeeze the case to pop him out. I'm going to put on this left arm of the figure. I'm not exactly sure how it goes. Let's see. It should, it should be easy. Oh, this is the left arm. Let's look here. Definitely, definitely looks like the left arm, but on the package, it looks like the right arm. That's confusing. Um, well, I'll try again I'll, on the right this time. And lo and behold, he does fit on the right. And there we have the beginnings of our Megazord. And last but not least of this whole video, let's look at number seven, my favorite ranger, the yellow ranger, Kelsey. This one appears to have been opened at some point and then stapled shut. I don't know how that affects the resale value, but it will never find out because it's irrelevant. I am opening the figure. And um, this one is molded very much the same way. This one has a fan on the front and it has, see, the fan, hands, feet, a uh, light speed rescue helmet. And inside, she does not have a bag, which leads me to believe even further that this was open. Um, interestingly, she is molded the same as pink. I don't remember her having a skirt. Um, I guess she did have a skirt. Um, what am I thinking of? I don't know. But, um... Again, they did not paint the belt around, they did not paint the belt buckle, but they did paint the back of the head and the top of the head, which a lot of these didn't. The arms do rotate, the waist does, and the neck does. Um, in some ways, the female build is higher quality than the male build, maybe because they made fewer of them. Just an idea. The foot is really molded like a foot. And let's peg her in. Listen. That's my ringtone. My ringtone, my text tone. So again, she locks in here, and when you squeeze, she's ready to fight. Now, let's try not to squeeze this time. Say she's securely locked in place, and then she popped out. So, all right, now she's semi securely locked in place. Let's get her locked in here. seem too keen on the idea, there we go, of locking in. It just took a little coercion. It's Kelsey, ever the free spirit. And there's half a Megazord. So alright, so that's a good Black Friday haul, and uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, or even if you do, please like, subscribe if you haven't already. Love to have you. And uh, keep on watching, please. 
And until next time, stay beautiful. Peace.